These two months since Trump's election have felt like the darkest of times, and I really haven't been able to muster much optimism as I try to integrate the realities of this country's white supremacy, misogyny, nativism, resurgent hatred, blindness about class and about its own true interests, blindness about our destruction of the planet. But friends and colleagues, along with my ancestors, reminded me of how my people have seen darker times than these and have somehow had the will to keep going, to reach high, to make a way out of no way, as we say. The focus here is on the food service workers killed at the World Trade Center, mostly immigrant, and many of them undocumented, invisible in life, even more invisible in death, and the meaning of this poem has changed in this, the age of Trump. Alabanza. Praise the cook with a shaven head and a tattoo on his shoulder that said, Oye, a blue-eyed Puerto Rican with people from Fajardo, the harbor of pirates centuries ago. Praise the lighthouse in Fajardo, candle glittering white to worship the dark saint of the sea. Alabanza. Praise the cook's yellow pirate's cap worn in the name of Roberto Clemente, his plane that flamed into the ocean loaded with cans for Nicaragua, for all the mouths chewing the ash of earthquakes. Alabanza. Praise the kitchen radio dial click even before the dial on the oven so that music and Spanish rose before bread. Praise the bread. Alabanza. Praise Manhattan from 107 flights up like Atlantis glimpsed through the windows of an ancient aquarium. Praise the great windows where immigrants from the kitchen could squint and almost see their world. Hear the chant of nations. Ecuador, Mexico, Republic Dominicana, Haiti, Yemen, Ghana, Bangladesh, Alabanza. Berrigan and the others showed that resistance to the criminal behavior of government can succeed. Our apologies, good friends, for the fracture of good order, the burning of paper instead of children, the angering of the orderlies in the front parlor of the charnel house. We could not, so help us God, do otherwise, for we are sick at heart. Our hearts give us no rest for thinking of the land of the burning children. We say, killing is disorder. Life and gentleness and community and unselfishness is the only order we recognize. How long must the world's resources be raped in the service of legalized murder? When, at what point, will you say no to this war? We have chosen to say with the gift of our liberty, if necessary, our lives, the violence stops here. The death stops here. The suppression of truth stops here. This war stops here. We didn't always need affirmative action. When we broke this crazy land into farms, when we planted and harvested the crops, when we dug into the earth for water, when we carried that water into the big house, kitchens and bedrooms, when we built that big house, when we fed and clothed other people's children with food we cooked and served to other people's children, wearing the garments that we fitted and we sewed together, when we hacked 
stacked and hauled huge trees for lumber and fuel, when we washed and polished the chandeliers, when we bleached and pressed the linens purchased by blood profits from our daily forced laborings, when we lived under the whip and in between the cuffle and chains, when we watched our babies sold away from us, when we lost our men to anybody's highest bidder, when slavery defined our days and our prayers and our night times of no rest, then we did not need affirmative action. Like the music Donald Trump can't hear. This is Gopnik. The experience of Germany in 1934 and of that unspeakable ascent to power is one that we ought to put aside as too enormous, too different, too blasphemous to even mention in our own crisis. But it is possible to be of the view that we ought always to keep that specter in front of our eyes not because our political opponents are, quote, like Nazis, unquote, but exactly because we too readily forget how easily the very worst can happen and by what quick complicity we accede to the unacceptable, more often from our exhausted longing for decent normalcy and normal decency than from ideological conversion. There's no point in studying history if we do not take some lesson from it. The best way to be sure that 2017 is not 1934 is to act as though it were. Um, a text from the, the book The Prophet by Khalil Gibran uh, talking about freedom. Uh, Gibran published this book in 19. 23, and they, many sources said that they, he wrote it from this very great place and library. وقال له خطيب حدثنا عن الحرية فأجابه قائلا رأيتكم عند مدخل المدينة وفي بيوتكم تسجدون لحريتكم وتعبدونها كما يسجد العبيد لأسيادهم الطغاة ويمجدونهم حتى وإن كان نصيبهم منهم القتل أجل رأيت الأكثر حرية بينكم في حديقة المعبد وفي ظل القلعة يحملون حريتهم نيرا على أعناقهم وغلا في أيديهم. A country that unleashed dogs on crowds of my skinned, the handlers raising their sticks for the sick split of black bodies. Alabama's gotten me so upset, Tennessee made me lose my rest. It took seconds to silence Malcolm. Tear the feathers from his words with bullets singing through him. King's bright color spread heavy on a Memphis balcony. It takes the right kind of monsters to merge into the nightmare of American history. I learned to become a vicious thing that knows how to find the throat. And everybody knows Mississippi, god damn. My mom, be bougie. Her nails, they did. Ain't never been afraid to throw down like you can catch these hands too. My mother walks like God made floors for her. Her figure knows why be an hourglass when you can be a glass of wine. My mother drinks white wine at the dinner table. No Chardonnay tears don't stain. My mother drapes me in champagne silhouettes. We don't throw clothes away in this house. We pass down our hand-me-downs. My mother's tongue has picked from guava trees. Always dresses in its Sunday's best. Always trying to act all articulate. Like she can't pronounce everything we eat, but we eat. My mother's cooking be bougie too. Her chicken won't wear anything that ain't go yet imported. <laughs> Let's you sit salty, indulge us in adobo. My mom will never serve her white rice plain. Don't like her food to be all white and colonized. Don't let you forget where it came from. My mother simmers her sadness on the stove. Over the past two months, the young people at my organization have been asking their classroom teachers if their parents are going to be deported, what they should expect. And if I were not a writer and a reader of poetry, I don't know 
where I would find the strength to be able to go into work uh, every day. Uh, it's no coincidence I actually keep a copy of Imagine the Angels of Bread in my desk drawer, so uh, it's really an honor to be here with everybody who's reading, and uh, Martina Spada in particular. Um, he's been an inspiration to me uh, and to all of us, I'm sure. The poem, uh, Self-Help for Fellow Refugees by Lee Young Lee. If your name suggests a country where bells might have been used for entertainment or to announce the entrances and exits of the seasons and the birthdays of gods and demons, it's probably best to dress in plain clothes when you arrive in the United States and try not to talk too loud. If you happen to have watched armed men beat and drag your father out the front door of your house and into the back of an idling truck before your mother jerked you from the threshold and buried your face in her skirt folds, try not to judge your mother too harshly. Don't ask. I orchestrate brutality, but I never wanted to compose this symphony. We batons fell into the role masterfully, though as the blue Beethovens adorned in badges used us to keep the beat on black notes. It's just that the syncopation of their screams is always the hardest to hear. As it ends and repeats, voices crescendo in agony as we direct the masterpiece. We helped create a piece once. We titled him Rodney. Reduced his life to eight minutes of mutilation, but that song got old real quick. So we found new symphony halls wherever the bars kept black notes in place. See, it's hard to be a conductor for this symphony especially when they twirl you like color guard on parade, eager and willing to control the next tune. See, we batons, the color of midnight, turn black bodies into battered heaps. Each of you, descendants of some past on traveler, has been paid for. You, who gave me my first name. You, Pawnee, Apache, Seneca. You, Cherokee Nation, who rested with me then forced on bloody feet left me to the employment of other seekers, desperate for gain, starving for gold. You, the Turk, the Arab, the Swede, the German, the Eskimo, the Scots, the Italian, the Hungarian, the Pole, you, the Ashanti, the Yoruba, the crew, brought, sold, stolen, arriving on a nightmare, praying for a dream. Here, root yourselves beside me. I am that tree planted by the river, which will not be moved. I, the rock, I, the river, I, the tree, I am yours. Your passages have been paid. Lift up your faces, you have a piercing need for this bright morning dawning for you. History, despite its wrenching pain, cannot be unlived. But 41 years drying on the line, 41 years rotting on the vine, 41 years of six by nine. This is the way of it, brethren. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man, 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 I'm a man in a box. Oh, Lordy, trouble so hard. Oh, Lordy, trouble so hard. 